Samson goes to Sur. And you know what Delilah means? Ease up. Take it easy. Relax. Don't be so intense. And he falls in love with Delilah immediately. He began to love the easy life. He began to love not having to carry a burden. No more worrying about the orphans of Israel or the widows in Israel. No more weeping over the poverty. No more, what shall I do, O oh God, to bring the house of the enemy down? Now, I put in my time. Now, I'm going to relax. I'm going to take it easy. Delilah's body went in the grave, but her spirit's still alive. And Delilah's still here today because she got religion. And the devil moved into church. He said, I've got Jezebel already planted in one church. I'm going to bring Delilah back. And I'm going to come to a church that's supposed to be wide awake, looking for the coming of the Lord, intensely in love with Christ, intensely wanting to win souls, those who are seeking the face of God. And I'm going to come. Delilah is going to come and do her thing and whisper. You don't have to live such a strict life. A little bit of pornography once a week. I heard one preacher say, well, Christians ought to be mature enough to take it and not be affected. A little drinking, a little partying, and that is sweeping through the churches now. Party time. Turning to drink. Turning to alcohol. And we think we can just walk through this, that we can indulge this, and it's not sucking out our spiritual life. And Delilah is very much alive in the church today, draining the life, ruining pastors. We see it all over the world, absolutely ruined by pornography and all of these vile things that we bring into our houses. And we think we can do this and get away with it. We think we're too mature because even when Delilah begins to mock him, you see, three times... He toys with the Philistines. Three times he not only grieves the Holy Spirit, he, he tests the Holy Spirit. Because you see, he's not valuing now the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. He's not saying this is the most important thing in my life, that the Spirit of God be on me and move through me. Because without the Holy Spirit, I am nothing. I have nothing. So now this woman toys with him. What's the secret of your strength? And the Philistines say, you entice him so that we can bind him. But we've got to know the secret of his strength. And he knew the secret was not in his head, on his hair. He knew it. He knew it was the Holy Spirit. He knew it was just the sign of separation. And he said, if I lose my hair, in other words, if I truly lose the spiritual reality of this sign, if I lose the spiritual reality of it, not just the symbol of it, but the reality of it in my heart, I'm going to be as weak as any other man. And they bind him. He starts struggling and fighting. He's weak as a kitten. And he didn't even know the Spirit, the Lord, had departed. And that's the tragedy today of thousands and even millions of Christians sitting in dead churches not even knowing the Spirit of God has left people living their lives and getting more and more attached to the world and its things and not even knowing that the enemy, that the spirit of Delilah has trapped them and they're being shorn in their spirit, in their heart, anything that could bring them through the last fires. We don't have a mere man as our deliverer. We don't have a Samson. We have a God-man. We have Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who is our deliverer. And Delilah is no match. I believe the Holy Ghost has been dispatched by the Father and the Son even now. He is under mandate from heaven. Go, Holy Spirit. Go and deal with the spirit of Delilah. Go right into her house and chase out every preacher you find in that house. Convict them once again. Call them and woo them and tell them, I want to give them one more chance of the glory of God, just as I did for Samson. And chase every Christian you find down there toying around, flirting with sin. Tell them, get out while they can because it's coming down. The roof is going to cave in.
because the Lord said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. I'm going to shake things up. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once in a little while, this is in Haggai 2, 6 and 7, I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, the dry land. And I'll shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill the house, this house with glory, saith the Lord Jesus. Build your walls. Guard your eyes. Don't let those abominations into your house. Sit and watch on TV some of the filthiest stuff in the world. Some of it written, produced by a homosexual community, and they're feeding your soul. Christians that can sit and watch R and X rated stuff and expect the Holy Ghost to move mightily in their families. Listen, church, don't get seduced by the things of this world. Don't let it take your heart. But I know that the only thing that's going to impact this world is a Christian, a true Christian, that is a vessel upon whom the Holy Spirit can shake and move and speak. Nothing that hinders the flow and the anointing.